Code Explains is high. Today we're going to talk about another array method, which is the every method. First, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Well, let's talk about a case where you need to use every. Let's say we have an array of numbers, and you want to check if all the numbers are positive. So I'm going to create a const called all positive, and then what I want to do is I'm going to test if each number of my numbers is greater than or equal to zero. So here, all positive will be true if all these numbers passes this test, and it's going to be false if just one of them doesn't pass the test. Let's start with 5. So 5 here is greater than 0. So 5 passes the test. What I want to do then is I want to go to the next one. So whenever the test is passed by a number, or if this condition here evaluates to true, then I want to continue. So I just want to go to the next one. Then if I go to minus 1 here, minus 1 is not greater than 0, so minus 1 didn't pass the test, which means the condition evaluated to false. In this case, what I want to do, because not all the numbers passes the test, I want to set all positive to false. And then I don't want, of course, to go to the next one because I don't need to. So I'm just going to go and break out from the loop. And this is exactly how every works. Now let's see we have an array of numbers that are all positive. So if we check 5, 5 passes the test, true, continue. Then 1, 1 also passes the test, continue. Then 9, 9 also passes the test. And now all my numbers passes the test, so all positive must be true. But we didn't set all positive to true anywhere in our code here, so what we need to do is to initially set all positive to true. So all positive will remain true if all the numbers or the elements in my array passes the test, and it's going to be false if just one number in my array doesn't pass the test. Now let's go and achieve that using real code. So I'm going to initially set all positive to true and then I'm going to use a for loop. So I'm going to start with the first one index and then I'm going to stop at the last one's index. Then I want to increment i by 1 to go to the next element each time. Now I'm going to assign this numbers with index i to a const called number just to make my uh, code more readable and then all I need to do is use an if else statement. So I'm going to use the same uh, test as before so I'm going to check if the number is greater than zero or not. So if this is true means that the number is positive I'm just going to the next one and that by using continue. Then if just one number doesn't pass this test here I'm going to set R positive to false and then break. So I don't want to go to the next one. Well now because all these numbers here are positive, if I run this code and console log uh, all positive, it's going to be set to true. Well, let's go and see how can we achieve this using every. So you want to go and call every on your array and then you want to pass in a function. Because we're passing a function here to another function, this function is called a callback function. Well, this callback function will be just a normal function that you need to create with the keyword function, then the name of your function. Well, if we will go and call the callback function on your array elements, and while doing that, if we will pass three parameters to your function. The first parameter is value, and basically, it refers to the element here. So when every calls the callback function on 5, then the value would be 5. And index will be 0, and the array will be our numbers array. Then when every will move to the next one, then the value will be 1, the index will be 1, and the array will be numbers. So then what you need to do inside your function, you can go and do any logic you want, but at the end you must return a test or a condition. So when every calls the callback function on your elements of the array and all the elements passes this test here, every will return true. And if just one of them doesn't pass this test here, 
or returns false for this condition here, every will return false. Now let's go and achieve the same thing we achieved here with the full loop using the every method. So I need to create my array numbers and then I want to go and create a function. I'm going to call this positive because this function will test if a number is positive or not. Now every will pass three parameters to my callback function positive. So the first one I'm going to call it number, the second one is the index and the last one is the array. And now because I don't need the index and the array, I'm just going to go and remove them and just keep the number. Now all I need to do is return a condition. I don't want to do any logic here, so I'm going to return the same condition we used here with the f statement inside our for loop. So positive will take in a number and then it's going to return true or false. True if that number is greater than zero and false if that number is less than zero. Now all I need to do is I'm going to call every on my array numbers and then pass in positive. So now every will go and call positive on my uh, first element here, 5. 5 is greater than 0, so it's going to return true. Then it's going to go to the next one, which is 1. 1 is also greater than 0, so we're going to get uh, true again, so we're going to move to the next one. 9 also is greater than 0 which means positive will return true. Now, because all the numbers here passes the test, so every will return true. Well, be careful here. If, for example, this one here was, or the second element here was a negative number, uh, every will call the function on five, five will pass the test. Then it's gonna call it on this one here. When this doesn't pass the test, uh, every will not call your callback function on the next one. It's just gonna stop here. Well, now if I run this code here and take a look on the all positive, it's going to be set to true. Now we can see that we achieved the same uh, result here with less code. And also this is more readable than this here. So you can just go and uh, say, uh, I'm checking here if every number in my numbers array is positive. Well, if you don't want to use a callback function, you can use an align function. You can pass your function directly to your every method. So let's do that. So I'm going to call every, then I'm going to pass in an anonymous function. The first parameter is the element. I'm going to call it number. You can call it whatever you want. Then I'm going to return the same uh, condition as before. Now, if we run this code here again, all positive will be set to true. Also, you can use an array function if you want. So I'm going here to call every, and I'm going to pass in an array function. Again, the first parameter will be number, and then I'm going to return my condition here. Now, again, if I run this code, all positive will be true. Now, if you're familiar with uh, an array function, when your array function all it does is returning a value, then you can just get rid of the curly braces and the return uh, keyword. Also, if your arrow function takes in only one parameter, you can just get rid of the parentheses here. So now this code here will look like this. So I'm going to call every on my numbers array, then I'm going to use my arrow function, and then the first problem is going to be number, and then I'm going to return my condition here. Again, if we run this code here, we're going to get the same result. All positive will be true. Now we can see that instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 lines of code, with just two lines of code, we achieved the same thing, and still this code here is more readable. So we can just see here that we are checking if every number in my numbers array is greater than 0. This means if every number is positive. Well, let's go and do a recap of what we have seen so far. So we can call every with a callback function. <coughs> and also you can use an align function where the first parameter is the element in your array and then its index, then the array itself, every was called upon. Now we want to talk about the second parameter you can pass in alongside with the callback function, which is the this argument. So let's see an example. So I have here an array called numbers. I have here a positive number, 
negative number then a positive number well i'm going to call every on my numbers array with an anonymous function so i'm going to check again if my numbers all the numbers are positive but i honestly don't care if they are all positive or not i'm going to console log the disk so the disk keyword here is what i care about now if we run this code here what will happen if we will go and call this function on 9 so the number here will be 9 then it's gonna console log the desk here now when you call this from inside the function this will always refer to the global object and now because I'm running this code here inside a web browser the global object is the window object then it's gonna return true because 9 is greater than 0 and then it's gonna go to the next one which is minus 1 then it's gonna console log the this again and now it's gonna return minus one greater than zero and that will be evaluated to false so in that case every will break so we'll stop so it's not gonna go to the next one which is eight so all we will see in our console is window console log two times well if some reason you want to change the object that this refers to all you need to do is use the second parameter so i'm going here to create an object and then i'm going to pass that object to my every method as the second parameter now if we run this code here instead of getting the window object as the object that this refers to now this will refer to this object here the object that i passed as the second parameter well i think that's all there is to know about the every method don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and see you in the next tutorial